Welcome back to the next screencast, the second screencast for HTML. In the previous one, we saw that an HTML page is the one that can be used or rendered by a browser. Uh, we are used, and we saw some basic concepts. And an HTML, a basic HTML page, is made up of these five tags, five basic tags. The doc type tag, which tells the HTML, the browser, which version of HTML you're using. In this case, we are using HTML5. Then we have the root tag, which is HTML, which encloses all of the tags within your page. Then we have the head tag and the body tag. The head tag also includes the title tag, which tells the browser what is the title of your page and displayed on the top of your tab. Now, in today's class, we're going to see some basic tags that are provided by HTML. These tags can be heading tags, paragraph tags, image tags, and hyperlinks. HTML provides six heading tags, starting from H1 all the way down to H6. Okay, so these are the six type of heading tags provided to us by HTML. Now let's see how it renders all these tags. This is heading one. I'm going to copy this text and paste it down over here. Just change it to two. Okay. Change this to four. Change this to five. And then change this to six. Now we already have this open over here. Let's see how it displays in our browser. You can see that the heading first is the biggest one, the largest heading, and it goes down decreasing the size until we go on to the low, lowest one, which is heading six. Apart from this, you can also write paragraph text inside your HTML page. Each paragraph text has to be displayed using the P tag. The P tag tells that this is a paragraph. This text included in this element is a paragraph. Okay, now let's see how it renders in our normal page. You look at, you see that this is my paragraph text. A paragraph text is almost something that is between your heading 4 and heading 5. The Jesus 12 points in the browser. Images in an HTML page is written using an H image tag. Now image tag as we saw earlier was is a void element. See H1 and P all of them were paid tags. Image over here on the other hand is a is a void element. That means it doesn't have content. It just can be described using attributes. So everything about the image included over here should be provided to the browser using attributes, not the content. Now what are these attributes that are need to be included when you're writing an image tag? The first basic attribute is the source attribute. The source attribute tells the tells the browser where to pick up the image from. So we can say source and then we can look up the image from somewhere. After that we have our along with this another important tag that should be part of your image the another important attribute that should be part of your image tag is the alt attribute. The alt attribute describes the image. It is used by screen readers to to read aloud your text. So the, whenever an image is encountered it will read the alt description of that image written within this alt tag. Uh, for example, if you can say image for instance over here. So these are two of the basic tags that can be used as image. Now source for an image is usually source for an image or for a hyperlink over here can is described using a path. This path can be a web based path that means you have to specify the complete path where you get the image from. This can also be a local path on your system.
it is preferable that whenever you are working on a, on an application on a project to make sure you put all the images inside a folder called IMG or images so we're working on a folder in desktop let's create a new folder let's call that folder images let's grab one of the images that we have on our desktop so that we can use that image over here let's say I want to use the image of okay I'll use an image of me delivering a presentation so let's take that image go to our web folder and paste it over here uh, that im name it seems to be too long so let's rename it like photo okay and now let's go back to our page over here and then put the source as source as that image now if you remember that we put that image inside the folder called images and inside that we have photo.jpg a good thing about brackets is that whenever you include an image you can see which image is there now if you look at it in our browser you can see that the image is too big we can reduce the dimension of an image using two more attributes provided by HTML which is the width attribute let's say I want to change it to, it's 640 by something the image original image is 640 and 640 pixels let's say I want to make it 200 by 200 pixels okay width and height to 200 pixels so to reduce the size of my image right now okay so these are some of the basic tags that can be used with an image tag we have source which provides the path of your image it can be a pad on web or it can be a pad, local pad that you have on your system. If it's inside the directory, you have to put images slash photo dot JPEG. And then we have an alternate tag which describes, which includes the description of your image. You can say delivering a presentation then you can also change the dimensions of your image using the width and the height attributes next off we have hyperlinks we can also include hyperlinks within our page uh, hyperlink is usually included using the a tag which stands for anchor now a tag is not a void tag it's a paid tag it has an opening and a closing tag and the content is written between them suppose I want to put a link to uh, some page let's say to the university page let's say we want to introduce university page so I'm going to put a link to the university page information about where to go to this page or the path of this page is included within your as an attribute that attribute is href okay it's a reference for your hyperlink it can also be something local or it can also be something within a page or it can be something within your folder or it can be also within or on a web page so now we are putting a web based link over here which stands for Okay, that should do it. Another attribute that is commonly used along with your hyperlink tag is there are many of them, but one of the common ones or one of the most popular ones is used is your target. The target tells uh, the browser when the user clicks on this link where does it redirect it to. It can be blank, which means to a new page, parent parent and top are usually used when you're working with iframes uh, since we're not doing that so let's go uh, to the two ones that we all we should, should be using the blank and self 
blank is used when you want to open it into a new page and self when you want to open the hyperlink in the same page let's use blank because by default it is always self so that should do it let's go back to our page and see how it is rendered now see it's over here and when I click on it it will open inside a new page it will go to redirect me to the home page of the university so these are some of the basic tags provided to us by HTML including text heading text and paragraph text images and hyperlinks okay see you for the next class